It's so dark. Are you sure you're not from the DC Universe? Here's your look, guys, at the Hot Toys Deadpool 2. This is the Deadpool 1 6 scale collectible figure. Code for this figure release is MMS490. I swung myself over to Alter Ego Comics and I picked this up where it was currently in stock. If you would like to also pick this one up for yourself, why not swing on over Magic Enthusiasts and pick this up from AlterEgoComics.com. To get this review underway, muchachos, we're going to go ahead and measure off to the very top of Deadpool's head. And using the Ultra Measuretron 5000, a ridiculous name for actually a rather clever tool, the figure stands exactly 12 inches in height, which in centimeters, let me go ahead and switch that over. Yelling to the back of the crowd, goes a heckler, what about centimeters? You interrupted me. I was just about to say that. 30.5 centimeters tall is Deadpool here. As for the figure's display stand, he comes up with one option that you can display the figure with, and that is this really cool textured Deadpool 2 display stand, which features Deadpool on the front there. It looks like he's actually telling you, shh, whisper, quiet, quiet. He's holding what looks to be a katana also in his hand as well. I don't know how he's, I guess his hand is over here and his finger is right here. Shh. But it is textured, I like that. I like picking up a display stand. Ridiculous as it may seem, be able to pick it up and you actually just feel a texture of it. Just do this all day, but I know you guys have places you need to go. That eggs, Those egg salad sandwiches aren't gonna be making themselves bunkos, so I'm gonna hurry along. The Deadpool 2 logo is also slightly raised as well. And on the front is a Deadpool front placard. I don't know if there's something specifically wrong with my display stand. The idea is you're supposed to take this part. These are the two components that it came with inside the packaging. You're supposed to take this end and you're supposed to screw it into this part right here. Well, already when I put it in, it's a little lopsided. Tightening it as I am, it only tightens so far before then it misses its spindle again 
and it becomes loose again. And there's also a big noticeable gap right here. I don't know if there's something specifically, again, wrong with this adjustable neck. I mean, don't get me wrong, it does stay in place, but if you turn it too much, it does seem to want to come loose again on you, at least on me, not on me, on the stand. The stand does have an adjustable neck as well, so depending on how you want to display the Merc with the mouth, you can either display him standing upright in a very <sighs> yawn um, museum pose, which is basically this right here, or you can display the figure a little bit more dynamic than that. Uh, it does have the adjustable waist clip, which again, depending on where you want to put it, it may seem a little too high for you, you can also uh, bring that down a little bit to a much more manageable state when you want to be displaying the figure. Hey now, where'd this come from? Also included, coming included with the figure, is a Deadpool cardboard front or back display piece. It's kind of a nice little accompanying piece. You know my feelings when it comes to these things. I always enjoy them, but I always feel like they take up a lot of space. Just to also show you how it looks, we'll take this. Oh, by the way, also just showing you how it all comes together. It's just basically a sheet of cardboard that is slightly bent right here. And then you put on these little side cardboard triangles. And then you also will want to put in the cardboard shelving. If we flip it around, let me show you how that comes together. Once those get fed through, you take these little C clamps of cardboard and they just wedge clamp, literally clamp to the sides of the shelving. And that keeps everything in place. What does it keep in place specifically? Well, for example, you can take some of the included in accessories. I'm sort of giving this all away away in advance. Normally we would talk about accessories later on into this, but you can take the sheath, for example, that will supply and hold his katanas. Those will just fit in there. According to the directions, this is where it's supposed to go. Although really, as you could probably guess it, the way it's sitting on these, uh, these will fall off very, very frequently. In fact, it might very well be the last, very last thing you would want to do. Uh, when you are putting these on the shelves. You also get the little tiny unicorn. I know we're getting ahead of ourselves here for accessories. Unicorn can also go up there as well. And also included comes a cardboard hanger, which unfortunately is a little on the chintzy side. Of all the things that the figure does come included with, you would think at the very least, it could have come with like a plastic hanger. And that is also for the X training X jersey that's gonna come included with the figure. You just fit it over top. It would also help probably to aid you with that if you open up the jersey well in advance so you don't have to bend the cardboard hanger. And you got, once the little jersey is in place, you just drape that on like so. This is sort of verbatim to what it would look like. There you go. It would be verbatim to what it would look like on the, uh, the instructions. This is kind of the way it's supposed to go. It, unfortunately though, as you could probably see it, if it leans forward ever so slightly, a lot of the stuff really does fall off. I wish there was like something better, a little bit more of a secure means to keep everything in place. Um, again, mileage may vary. If you really are bumping, like if I just bump the table, for example, a lot of this stuff is gonna fall off. But it's a nice little accompanying piece. I say little, really, but I mean, if you take, let's just take the hanger off. Let's just take the sheath off. And we're just gonna put the display stand right there. We'll put that in the front just like that. You can kind of see where I'm going with all of this. And we're going to take the clamp. We're just going to clamp it around Deadpool's torso. There we go. I know, I know, I know. A little bit yawn. A little bit of a yawn. But uh, that's what it would look like when you've got the display backdrop behind it. Again, I have to just stress it is cardboard. Um, and again, size spacing is really going to be your problem. You're either going to have a lot of space. If you are displaying these figures on shelving, for example, you may not have as much of the issue. If you are displaying it like this guy with two thumbs in a DTOLF, then of course you're limited by how much space you can afford. And I don't think many DTOLFs have that much clearance to them. If they do, you sort of have to wedge that right in there. And of course that's going to cause damage to the cardboard and you're not going to see anything behind Deadpool either. Now, before we get to the extensive amounts of accessories that come included with Deadpool, we're of course going to have a look at the figure tailored here in his crimson red outfit that he would have famous in both Deadpool 1 and Deadpool 2 respectively. 
there's not really a whole lot that gets changed between the outfits. A few little changes here and there, but really, for the most part, the suit stays somewhat consistent with both the films. We'll have a look at the head sculpt, and then we'll sort of caterpillar our way down the rest of the body, looking at the rest of the outfit. The top of the head, for example, is very nicely sculpted here. I believe it is also hand-painted on all of the head sculpts right here. Um, they've done a really good job of actually transitioning uh, the fabric outfit to that of the plastic head sculpt up the top. This part right here is plastic. This part right here is fabric. Um, this is a good example of how something can marry the two together and still looks successful. Iron Spider recently looked at on this channel. I'm looking in your direction. Uh, I don't know, again, like, this isn't new. This, they're not new to this rodeo. Why they couldn't have simply just mimicked something. Again, it's a little bit harder, I guess, because it's vinyl. But Deadpool pulls it off rather successfully. You can see sort of the cross-hatching of fabric here. I love the way that it's got this pull around the nose. Even the area around the ears, you can see that the fabric has pulled taut against it. That you can see the outline areas of the ear. The seam lines are actually quite done rather well. Looking at it from a distance, you would almost even imagine that this is something that was tailored, sewn and seamed here in which this was fabric. And that's not actually the case. This is, like I said, this is a uh, this is plastic right here. The paint is done exceptionally well here on Deadpool's head sculpt. Making, of course, use of a couple of magnetized eyes. I'll show you guys that and also in a second. But again, the head sculpt looks really, really good. I, don't, I never picked up the original Deadpool, sort of thinking, lingering in the back of my mind uh, that eventually we would get ourselves a Deadpool 2 release, and sure enough, that was the case. You've even got the little pointed tip on the end of his, at the very back end of his mask. Again, I'm really, really happy with how this one turned out. Now, if you caterpillar down the body here, caterpillar, what was he talking about? Uh, you've got both a combination of almost like a faux leather area, and then, of course, you've got that same cranberry color that makes up the head portrait here. Mixed amongst all of that are certainly tools of destruction, a lot of holsters, a lot of pocketed areas. The belt is a loose piece. It's really only just fastened around to the front section here of Deadpool, making use also of his trademark Deadpool belt buckle and his logo there as well. I am a little worried about one section of the belt. It would be these areas right here. It seems like it is a different type of material that made up the front buckle area, This, these on either side. I hopefully hope, hopefully hope, that those seam lines stay intact. Um, I don't have any problems with them thus far. I'm wondering if they've been glued in place, but you can see a little bit of the fraying there that I'm talking about. Um, all the pockets on Deadpool are seamed shut. They don't seem as if they can open up. <laughs> they don't seem to open up. Uh, none of these, again, are something that you can open up. They're all also attached in place as well. I'm glad that they attached them. And uh, I think the sideshow release of Deadpool had more like clips where you could just clip on the various pockets, which would sound great on paper. Don't get me wrong. Everything sounds great on paper. But unfortunately, one of the problems you have with clipping on pouches is that any bit of banging, those pop right off. You can see that they've basically looped each and every one of those onto the belt. It ain't going anywhere. Uh, he's also got the shoulder strap here, which also, again, is a separate loose piece. This is just something that's harnessed over top of the, the torso of the figure. And then this strapping also carries its way down to the holstered section, which will also hold the pistols when we eventually have a look at those. Uh, proportionally, it does look good. I mean, the figure, when I initially got it out of the packaging, I thought like the ankle area, kind of like the ankle leading up to the knees, that would be the area of the calves, seemed slender. Again, the more that I look at it, and again, going back and re-examining the, the source material, Deadpool 2, I, accurately, I think that is right. Um, as we move further down the figure, of course, you've got the seams there. I mean, these little gray panel lines just add a little bit of extra pop to the figure. It runs its way across the torso. It runs its way across the neck. And then also even like the areas of his uh, pectoral muscles here, there's also that little indicator there with these squared patches that stick out from the rest of the fabric. 
Uh, we work our way down the legs. We've got a couple of printed uh, little knee guards here. They are actually part of the fabric, but you can see that the way that sheen, the light hits it, you can sort of see how it's been printed on the knee rather than sewn on the knee. Again, you got a few pockets on the sides. There's another holster. Hey, how are you, holster? And there is Ryan Reynolds behind right there, just drawing your attention to it, which comparing it to another recently looked at figure, the Ben Affleck tactical suit Batman. This is a, a moderately successful, in fact, actually it's more successful of a behind. I'm not drawing much attention, hopefully, to this in the review, but uh, again, it's, uh, it's a little bit more easier to manage if you want to manage moving along. Uh, moving down, we've also got the gauntlet areas here, the parts of his boots. Of course, those are a slightly different sheen, different paint really altogether. It's almost sort of like a metallic raspberry color. I like when discussing paints to try to incorporate as much food related descriptions for paint as I possibly can. You've also got a sheath there on the side located for the supplied uh, knife, which we will look at also in a second. And then it comes also down to his boots. And the boots are very nicely done, carrying over, again, that same raspberry color that we saw at the top. And there's the undersole treads. I didn't realize how complicated, how uh, involved, actually, these treads look. I guess that's what it would look like in the film. You don't see many scenes in which you see the undersoles of Deadpool's shoes. So this is a good opportunity to have a look at those right now. Now, this is also a fun inclusion that Hot Toys opted to give the Deadpool 2 figure, a pair of high heels. One made famous by the music video Ashes by Celine Dion, a fantastic song and music video. I'm not usually on board Celine Dion, but I have to admit that song works extremely well and I'm glad it was on the featured on the Deadpool 2 soundtrack. Uh, walking in, of course, would have been Ryan Reynolds or somebody probably dressed as Deadpool wearing the high heels and then broke out with a dance number next alongside Celine Dion. By the way, though, if anybody was wondering, Celine Dion always works at like 11. If you want to bring that stuff down to a 5, it, it really isn't going to happen. Uh, you can even see, too, the way that they've, they've uh, sculpted this. There you go. You can see that the feet, there's a, a foot, a toe, and several different smaller uh, soldiers following along the general. That's the general toe. Once again, you've got the cr that raspberry color that we were discussing before. I like that there are different kind of uh, blacks made use here. Sort of a matte black for the high heel portion, a shinier black on the strap that goes across the foot, and then the foot underneath it, a different black altogether spending a lot of time talking about high heels, but I feel it's very crucial talking about high heels, talking about, of course, uh, Ryan Reynolds behind on this figure as well, all of which we can quickly move along from, and we'll have a look at the rest of the accessories that come include with the figure. I suppose before we do that, Sunshine, we're going to have also a look at the interchangeable eye plates that come include with the figure as well. Deadpool here comes with a series of them, a total of, uh, well, there's eight inside, and then there's two. That would be simple math, giving us a total of ten. Defaulted was not these eyes, but I just changed them out for literally like the final looks of the figure in the uh, the opener before we had a, a start of the look at the figure. I actually kind of like the open eyes the most, but again, there's a variation. There's several different eyes to choose from. We'll just get Deadpool here to stand for a second. I'll open this up. It's almost like opening up a treasure chest of eyes. This is something that perhaps even Buffalo Bill would be so envious of at the moment. But a series of interchangeable eyes. There's sort of like squinting eyes. There is slightly a little bit more open eyes, all of which attach via magnets. So for example, let's take this one right here. Why not? Let's take this one right here. And if you want to change out Deadpool's eyes, there is technically... There is technically a magnet tool that comes included with the figure. I honestly don't find it works all that well. It's a very, very strong magnet. I'm just reaching off camera. There it is right there. Um, it does feature the Deadpool logo on both sides. And uh, you can feel it's a durable, thick metal disc. You just want to attach it to Deadpool's face. I mean, it would literally just stay there until the end of time if you wanted to. Um, and it's supposed to help aid in picking up and removing the disc or removing the plate of the, the eye plate. It doesn't always necessarily work. 
In fact, actually, when I was taking off Deadpool's eyes, I think it was this side that I found worked a little bit better. If you want to just avoid the nonsense of doing this by using the disc, one thing you can also do too is just take the eyes and if you push, if you just kind of get your finger on the side and just sort of very carefully slide them, push it this way, you can usually pop the eyes right out. There it is right there. It's kind of unlike the Iron Spider, which had that little divot point. There isn't really so much a divot point, but you can kind of get, again, your finger in there and you just replace it to the eye that you want to use. This is, again, good if you want to have one open eye or one slightly more wider eye and then one more slightly closed eye. Again, if you want to just change it to the other side, you just want to get your finger in there on the side. Just kind of push it, push it forward and the eyes come out quite easily. And let's find, let's grab another eye here. Let's grab another eye. Which eye are we going to go with? Well, let's grab, let's grab this eye. There we go. And just pop that in place. And there's, I guess, just a normal expression to Deadpool. You can certainly mix and match it. I'd be so compelled to probably use one open eye, one slightly closed eye, and just kind of change it up. It gives them a little bit more expression, if you will. Running through the rest of Deadpool's extensive library of accessories, he comes with not one, but he comes with a pair of pistols. The pistols do seem identical to one another. There's no markings or Deadpool logos anywhere to be found on either of the pistols. And one small touch that I appreciate is that you can take the pistol. There we go. You can slide that back and you can see already one of the bullets in the top chamber. Now that actually works the same on both of these. There you go. You can see both of them in place. Again, a nice little small touch. I like that. Um, one other thing as well. Let me just close. This one is a little bit, there we go, a little tighter than the other one. Um, both of these also have, which is a little harder to get your finger in there. They also have the little clips. You just pull those out. There we go. There's one. And the other one will have that as well with, as you can see, the bullet in the top there. Now, if you slide this back, lo and behold, hey, where'd it go? A feat of magic? No? No, it's actually just this one right here. When you slide this into place, pop that into place, you can see that the bullet sits into the top chamber. A nice little small feat, something accomplished here by Hot Toys. So you get a pair of pistols if you don't want to display them in Deadpool's hands. One thing you can also do, of course, is put them into the supplied holsters. I must admit, they do sit a little on the loose side. Um, when you fit them in place, yeah, they will sit slightly loose. But I guess it's better than them not fitting well at all, at the very least. And you don't have to try very hard to pull them out either. So that's also something that's good. So it comes with the pistols. Next included, uh, at least from the next accessory that we're going to run by, he also comes included with a small dagger. The dagger has serration, serrated on the edge there, I should say. It's done in silver. The handle has a little bit of texturing added to there as well. Sort of not the most exciting of the accessories that you can display the figure with, but at the very least, there is once again a place where you can display it on the figure. Simply just slide it into the side sheath located on the side of his leg. He only has one. The other side doesn't have that. Kind of gives you some idea as to which side you can put them then on. Just again, get the figure to stand. Next thing we'll look at is he does come with a pair of katanas. Now the katanas, at the very least, seems to be made out of metal. Like, if you look at it and try bending it, I wouldn't advise bending it too much, they do feel like they are made of metal. The actual handle portions, though, are made of plastic. Carries a little bit of that cranberry color, that crimson color I like so much. And again, you've got that sculpting there added to the handle portion as well. Now, also to come included with the figure, is of course his sheath. Now the sheath is magnetized, which I do quite like. It's magnetized on the back section right here. You can take the katanas, just slide those into place. There's a certain way that you have to slide them in. If you put them in the wrong way, there's sort of like resistance. It's telling you, you need to stop. You need to look at your directions before you proceed any further. And there is what the sheath looks like. You just want to take the figure and this section right here, 
just attaches just via magnets. Magnets is certainly the best way to go as opposed to having to peg, force a peg into the upper torso of Deadpool. I mean, Deadpool certainly will regenerate himself, but I can't imagine he's going to enjoy that much at all. The figure also comes included with his little unicorn doll. A nice little recreation of the unicorn doll. It's painted quite nicely. You can see that the eyes are done there in blue. Even like the horn is painted there in gold as well. No articulation to speak of. That would be wishful thinking on your part, my friends, to be imagining that this would have posability. It would certainly grant you wishes, but at the very least, it's not going to have any posability to it. Um, it's just plastic. Like I said, it's just a staction piece. But a nice little accompanying piece to come included with the mark with the mouth. The next thing we will look at is these little tiny daggers. Now, they're advertised as shurikens. I don't believe that these are actually shurikens. I believe they're just actually small handheld daggers. But they are extremely tiny. Something of which you will, of course, lose if you're not very careful. One thing also, if you want to look at them here, you've got this section right here that looks almost as if it would have housed these inside. These ones are not removable. They're just they're just sculpted there in place. I mean, you can kind of imagine where these would come out. There is no, from what I can see, any place on the figure in which you can put these if you don't, of course, want to have them displayed in the figure. I thought, again, maybe you could have tucked them into the sides, but there again, there's no, seems to be no area in which you can sport these. He also comes included with his restraining collar, something which he wears in the film. He does technically wear it while wearing this suit. I mean, when he is in prison, he doesn't have the Deadpool mask on. You get the Wade Wilson head sculpt instead, which I suppose is one thing I kind of wish that the figure could have come included with. I'm sure ultimately we're probably going to get ourselves an unmasked Deadpool head featuring the portrait or slightly scarred portrait of actor Ryan Reynolds. Uh, he does also wear this near the end of the film as well, but that's sort of when he's got the slightly more ashed gray X-Force costume, which we will also be getting from Hot Toys as well. To add this to the figure, you can sort of see, if you look at the inside here, see there's one section right here that looks like it's sticking up from the rest. That's the part where you can detach it. You just fit it over top of his neck, like so, and then you just revisit the snap closure and tab it into place. Again, it's a nice little piece. It's a good accompanying piece if you want to display the figure with this. This sort of falls into the same category as the X jersey, the training jersey that we'll look at in a second. A nice accessory piece, and I'm always glad that uh, Hot Toys gives you all these extra things that you can display with the figure. Truthfully, I probably will never find myself displaying him with the collar, but again, I appreciate for the fact that they would include this. You know, talking a little bit about some of the things that I kind of wish this figure could have included, this is sort of a ridiculous request on this collector's part. Many people had mentioned the unmasked Wade Wilson head sculpt, which I certainly would agree with. An unmasked head portrait would have been ideal for this particular figure and a good way to separate it from the initial Deadpool that we had gotten from Hot Toys. But I also want to do one better. I want to introduce something else, maybe as a deluxe version, as this figure really only came out as a standard release, but as a deluxe version, it would have been fantastic if he had come with an easel, probably can see where this is going, a wig, and if he had come also with a shirt. Yes, in fact, I would have adored this figure even more, even more than I currently do, if they had found a way to incorporate the hair and the shirt. Uh, of course, when he's doing the promotional, uh, promoting the movie, the opener, I think teaser trailer, he was dressed as Bob Ross. One of my all-time favorite things to watch growing up, and even now as an adult, I would have ad absolutely adored if Hot Toys had incorporated things to make this guy into a Bob Ross Deadpool. Complete again with his easel. Maybe the painting in which he ends up painting at the very end of the teaser. Again, the, the wig would have been awesome. And of course, the shirt for Bob Ross. Oh well. You know, surprisingly enough, one other thing I'm slightly disappointed with when it comes to this figure is the choice of hands that they gave him. I mean, he comes with, I'm going to go run through these right now for you. Uh, currently, I've got him just a pair of, uh, excuse me, there I go again, slightly more boring closed fists. Now, of course, they would incorporate some other things as well for holding, say, katanas. He comes with a pair of katana, thing, thing, 
hands. Uh, the figure also comes with a pair of shooting hands for poof, 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 if you wanted to give him some pistols, which again, the figure is coming included with. But then he comes with other things where it's like, okay, I get why they would have incorporated because it's fun, it's Deadpool. He comes with like the shooty, shooty, invisible gun pointing hand, and he also comes with a thumbs up. Okay, I get that, that's fun. He also comes with a fanned out hand, a couple of fanned out different hands. Uh, and then he also comes with, of course, oh, made you look. He also comes with this hand as well, the A-OK -okay hand, or I guess, yeah, the A-OK -okay hand. The only couple of hands that I kind of wish the figure could have come with as well was, of course, the I love you hands and almost even like a pair of flat palms. In the opener of this review, I like to do like little kind of montages of different ways that you can pose and display the figure. I would have loved a pair of relaxed hands to go probably best with say like the high heels. If you want to have him sort of draped back, kind of just bending and buckling his torso into a curve formation and you could have had the hands bent outward. This also leads to something about the promotional artwork in which you would have had Deadpool sitting in a chair and he would have been riddled like Flashdance with the bullets, the rain of bullets. That would also have been something that would have been neat as well if he had come with the chair. But at the very least, I wish he could have come with the heart-shaped hands and possibly a pair of flat hands, just like regular relaxed hands, which you could also put against his face if you want to give him more shocked expression. I guess at the very least, you have these hands, which you can kind of fill in the void of those other hands that this figure didn't come included with. I mean, you can put them against his head, but it doesn't look like these hands are really intended for that. Kind of wish that he could have come with those hands I just mentioned. Okay, so it's a lovely day in the neighborhood. We're gonna get ourselves dressed up, go out on the town. I'm gonna take the jersey off of the hanger. There's the cardboard hanger once again. I'm just gonna put that to the side. I'm gonna spin the figure around. I'm gonna take the sheath off. I'm basically just describing to you everything I'm about to do to this figure. That doesn't sound too good. Uh, what I am gonna do though, to put the jersey over top, there's the back of the jersey, by the way. It says trainee, like it does in the film. And on the front, we've got the X logo, also like it did in the film. This detaches on the sides. There's a Velcro right here, and there's a Velcro closure right around the sleeve area. You're basically gonna to wanna to separate this like so. And normally, you know, if you dress a small child, or even if you dress yourself, congratulations for that, uh, you normally would just put it over top. You put your arms up, somebody would just put the shirt on top of you. Here in this case, you're actually gonna put it on, on the side. Kind of just bring the arm up just to kind of release some of the tension there. And then you're just gonna stretch this over top of Deadpool's head. Luckily, it's made of, of the exact same type of jersey material. Let's bring that up a little bit more. It's the same type of jersey material as you would normally find with like a larger jersey. So if you ever wear a jersey, it's basically the exact same thing. You're just gonna fit this over the head, which is the hardest part. And then once this is on the other side, you're just gonna lift his arm up, gonna bring this around, and you're gonna bring this around and just attach the Velcro together. You're gonna do the exact same thing with the sleeves, bring that around. And for the most part, it hides the fact, hey, there's a big noticeable seam on the side there that has Velcro. You don't really see it too much. I mean, it is, Obviously, the e the more effective look would be not having this at all, but then that would be very difficult to fit over top of the body. They also could have Velcroed even really the back, but I guess you would see a big seam line here where this would fit around, and then you would just seam this here via the Velcro. One good thing about it, though, is that you can still take the katanas via the sheaths. There's the sheath right there. And you can still attach it via Velcro to the back of his body. This certainly would be an entertaining idea for how you can also display the figure, something I would almost even consider doing if I didn't, if I already had the first Deadpool, I likely would probably display him like this. Truth be told, the costume looks so good. I mean, just for me personally, when I display these figures, I kind of like just to pose them in their original outfits, but certainly this leans me to even more and more considering the idea of trying to get Source out and get the original Deadpool and I could display the secondary Deadpool with the jersey here. And I think that would look very cool. One last thing I just wanna show you guys as well is bringing back once again the this 
backdrop display, which again is really neat if I can find the proper place to put it. The reason why I did also bring this back into the frame was something that it reminded me of when I was putting the sheath onto the back of his jersey. Uh, the idea that there is something, of course, in between his torso and the sheath of his katana reminded me of something again that comes included with this that I failed to mention in this review. If you just put the figure right there, stay there for a second, Deadpool. You have this magnet right here. This magnet also helps to aid with displaying this. If you spin this around, or I'm just gonna put it at least so that you can see both sides of it here. If you take the katanas out, which you will have to unfortunately take out for the sheath to fit on the shelf, shh, shh, seashells by the seashore. We're gonna put that onto the front there. And then you're gonna put the magnet on the other side. The magnet, if you properly place it, put it the right way here, the magnet, there we go, I had it the wrong way. The magnet actually holds the sheath in place. Something I actually forgot to mention at the beginning of this review. It does help aid at least one thing from falling over. You're still gonna have the problems, unfortunately, when it comes to the unicorn. Unicorn, if the shelf is slightly on an angle, which for some strange reason it is, the unicorn will fall off. Maybe we'll put it on the bottom shelf for the time being. And then of course, when Deadpool is finished being the trainee for the day, he can take it off like he would, like say Mr. Rogers taking off his cardigan, and then you can grab the hanger and you can just hang this up. I guess you could also even take the restraining collar and you could put that up there as well. I mean, it's not as much clearance, it's not as much space for it, but uh, you could put that probably up there as well. Looking at the figure's articulation, it is the following. So his head rotates all the way around. One good thing about this being separate from the rest of his torso, being that they haven't adhered this part of his fabric to his neck means that you can still get a full range of motion. The head moves up and down and it rotates left and right. It basically is working only by one single ball joint that is attached to the base of the neck. You just can't see it. It's underneath the outfit here. The arms hinge outward like so to about there on both sides, about a 45 degree angle, I suppose. Uh, the arms move forward. They also move back. It has a swivel on the bicep area. He has a double hinge on the elbow, which also will aid with, if you wanna have the hands, for example, really far up onto his face, uh, you can accomplish that with the double hinge in the elbow. The hands rotate all the way around. There we go. Upper torso crunch, waist swivel back and forth. The legs split out, forward and back. I did actually hear that a lot of people said that the uh, the fabric is a little bit more relaxed on the Deadpool 2 figure versus the original Deadpool 1. So it might actually be a benefit to pick up the secondary one just because it has all the additional accessories, but also for the fact that you get a little bit more range of motion in things like the legs, the arms, the torso and whatnot. Uh, he has a swivel at the top cut of the thigh. He has a double hinge on the knee. Sometimes when you are rotating the knees, for example, you might find yourself readjusting everything after the fact. Like these, the little guards here will find the, find them kind of shifting away, almost as if they want to leave home and venture out into the world. You just want to bring them back. Say, hey, you're not ready yet, my friends. Don't be going anywhere. So you might just want to bring those forward. This also swivels a bit as well, so you might find readjusting this to be something that is a frequent scheduled task if you are displaying this figure. Uh, the feet hinge up and down, rotate back and forth. There is also an ankle pivot. There is sadly no toe articulation, but it's not to say that really you can't display the Merc with the mouth in enough really cool poses, hopefully some of which I was able to do at the very beginning of this review. This is a nice looking figure, a disappointment in fact that I never got around to picking up the first Deadpool, but certainly as things normally go with both Marvel films, even though Deadpool sort of is kind of in that in-between area. But between Marvel films and Hot Toys, guaranteed when there's gonna be a new film coming out, there's usually always a few steps later a new figure that's also coming out as well. I passed the first Deadpool, uh, the first go around. I'm so glad I jumped on the chance getting this Deadpool for Deadpool 2.
Now, it would be hard to believe that lightning could strike twice, and that a sequel of Deadpool could be as funny as the original. And while I do think that the original is still marginally a little bit better than the sequel, I, th I loved the sequel. I thought it was funny, it was full of action, and certainly did help as well that we got ourselves finally an appearance of Cable, and a surprise appearance of all things from Juggernaut. I really was not expecting that, and being a big fan of Juggernaut as I am, I was thrilled to finally see a real rendition, the way he should have been right from day one, a real rendition of what Juggernaut should look like in feature films. Uh, for Lightning striking twice, at least from Hot Toys parts, I think actually they did a better job here than the first figure. Truthfully, I never picked up the first Deadpool, but based on videos that I saw of him, and then comparing it to this one, I think that the likeness is a little bit better, the costume is a little better tailored, and overall I think this is a better executed figure than the first one that we got going around. Now still though, if you did pick up the first one, I think there's still enough merits to getting this one as well, being the fact that he's got all these extra accessories that the original release didn't have. Heck, you could even just display this Deadpool in high heels if you wanted to, kind of like I did in the opener of this review. He's got also the X-Training jersey, which is something else that you could entertain the idea of doing if you already have the original Deadpool. Some good news, though, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself. Like I said, I swung on over to Alter Ego Comics. One of the best things about Alter Ego Comics is that they do provide free double boxing. So sometimes I've heard people say this themselves. We like to order six scale figures from companies, but a lot, a lot of times they only ship it in the regular brown mailer box. You know the one that as soon as you open it up, the Hot Toys box is inside? Well, Alter Ego Comics actually double boxes it. So you'll get yourself a regular brown box, you'll open that up, and then inside will be the regular brown mailing box that contains the Hot Toys figure inside. They also offer free shipping on most of their six scale figures, and their customer service is some of the best I've seen from online uh, toy companies, toy collecting companies. So if you are interested in picking this one up for yourself, you can swing on over to Alter Ego Comics right now as the Merc with the Mouth is currently in stock over there. And while you're also at it, the folks over at Alter Ego Comics have issued a coupon code for you guys, the viewers. Just simply use the word SPOT15, S-P-O-T, 15, and you can take $15 off. $15 off your purchase of $150 or more. It's limited to one per household, so if you guys are interested in maybe picking up Deadpool and maybe like myself, waited on it, waited maybe to the last minute to pick this one up for yourself and you, you want to pick this guy up right now, swing on over to Alter Ego Comics. Save yourself $15 using the coupon code SPOT15. Today we were having a look at the Hot Toys. This was the Deadpool 2. Deadpool, one six scale collectible figure. A fantastic rendition of Deadpool from the feature films. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Hot Toys reviews, there's a whole playlist just for you. And make sure as well, if you haven't done so already, you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more videos like this will be coming soon to the channel. As always guys, thanks for watching as you always do. And I'll see you guys next time.